This is uh, part one of the two-dimensional uh, motion mock test. Uh, George runs at five meters per second horizontally off the edge of a 9.2 meter tall cliff and lands in the water. So here is our cliff, and then we've got water here, and this is 9.2 meters. That's the height of the cliff, and George He's up there, and he is running, and we assume that's a purely horizontal velocity, 5.0 meters per second off the edge of the cliff, right? And of course, he's going to go, i draw more water there, right? And sploosh, like that, right? Um, and there's three questions. What time is he in the air? What distance from the bottom of the cliff does he land? And what is his speed of impact? Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make a little table like this. And these are all things that are horizontal. These are all things that are vertical. And then these are all the things that we know. Okay, now. <clears throat> The five meters per second that he's running horizontally, okay, that's going to be the initial horizontal velocity for sure. And the 9.2 meters, that's going to be a vertical displacement. So that's the x here. And I'm going to say down 9.2 because, of course, that's what he's going to do, right? Uh, but there's some other things that we know. Since it's a cliff problem, this velocity is purely horizontal. So there's no part of it that's vertical. So this is true for cliff problems. Okay. But it's going to the final will not be zero because he's going to fall and he's going to gain horizontal or vertical velocity. Horizontally though, our acceleration is zero. Assuming that he hasn't recently eaten a Taco Bell, um, we can assume that he's not doesn't have any propulsion. Uh, uh, methods to go faster in that direction, right? So if, we, if the, it starts out five meters per second, if it can't change, then the final has to be five meters per second. And then on this side, all we ever do is uh, um, v is x over t, or x is vt, or t is t is x over v, right? I mean, that, that's all we ever do. This side's very boring. Um, we do know one more thing, and that is on Earth, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Um, and so this side, this is the side where we're going we're gonna to actually solve something. So let's get out a calculator. Actually, I'm going to get this calculator out because the keys are less sticky. Okay. Uh, I'm going to choose to find the final velocity. I'm going to use uh, Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ax, uh, just simply because I know x, vi, and a. I don't have to use the t, right? So my final is equal to 0, the square root of 0 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 9.2. Right, and I can type that into my calculator just like that. Square root left parenthesis. I'm not going to put the zero squared in there, but I'm going to go 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 9.2. And I get 13.42. I'm going to say 428. Okay. But when I put it in here, I'm going to make it negative 13.428. Um, and that's because I know it's going down. This came out positive because it's the square root of a square, and those always come out positive. But I know that it's negative. Okay, so when he hits the water, we know that he's going right at that instant, right before he hits the water, he's going over 5.0 meters per second and down 13.428 meters per second. He's doing both. He's going over still, and he goes over the whole, the whole way down. He's got a horizontal velocity of 5 meters per second. And he gains more and more vertical velocity.
Um, to find time, I'm going to choose the formula x is vit plus one-half at squared. And since the initial velocity is 0, this goes away, right? So negative 9.8, whoops, negative 9.2, the, the displacement equals uh, one-half negative 9.8 t squared. And the negatives go away. And so we get, uh, what, 2 times 9.2 divided by 9.8 is t squared. And then I take the square root of that. And I get that the time is 1.3702. And I'm carrying all these numbers along. Like I've got five digits written down. And that way I won't be off. Okay. And then this thing carries over like that, kind of a whoop thing, okay? You know, so the time he, he hits the water and he stops moving vertically at the same time he stops moving horizontally, right? Okay, and we've nearly filled everything in. The last thing remains to find x. I'm going to use this guy, x is vt, right? So I'm going to go this times this, right? So 1.3702 times 5, I get 6.8512. 1, 2, I guess. There we go. And let's see, I think we've answered some of these questions. The first question is, what time is he in the air? And that is right here. Uh, and on the sheet it says 1.37, because I just rounded it to 3, even though I was only given 2. Uh, what distance from the base of the, uh, the bottom of the cliff does he land? Uh, the answer given on the sheet is 6.85 meters. And that's where you're getting that. Okay. Uh, speed of impact. Well, when he hits the ground, okay, let's draw another picture of that, because I don't like that picture so much. Okay. But when he hits the ground, this velocity of impact is 5 over and 13.428 down, right? right? That's his velocity right at this point, right? And so the speed, the speed is the hypotenuse of this thing, right? So the speed is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 13 point. And I can type that into my calculator just like that. I have to put parentheses around this. So I'm going to go square root, left parenthesis, 5 squared plus 13.428 squared, right parenthesis. Enter and I get 14 point. This, this, this hypotenuse is 14.329 meters per second. The answer on the sheet says 14.3, which is reasonably good. Skippy, skippy. Woohoo.